Hello, this is Todd from Todd International. Um, on this sign, on during this episode, I am talking about hair. Uh, we're talking here about um, eight reasons why your hair is dry, brittle, falling out, and alopecia. So this year, I want to focus on how we get to uh, the root of the problem, not trying to cover up the problem but the root of the problem, you know what I'm saying? When you figure out the right course of action, um, then you may see growth and you may not see growth. It all depends on which course of action you take, okay? Which course of action you take that you will see uh, a true result of what you want. Okay, the first one is genetics. I didn't spell it right, but anyway, genetics. Your DNA, that's your mom and your daddy, equals you. So, your mom could be Jamaican, West Indians, and whatever else, Asian. Your dad could be African, Native American, Chinese. So these are uh, different types of DNA mixed together. So they come up with different looks, different shades, and all like that. It also comes up with different texture of hair. Because some of us can come out with our um, from the genetic part, from the DNA, from our mother that has Indian on her side. So some of, some of our family members could have very soft hair and they can get it out from the Indian, the, 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 the mother side. Then on the other side, on the dad side, they uh, parents might have been all black, just straight down lineage, just no, no inter, intermingling with any other culture, you know what I'm saying, or any other race. And he has all black hair. So you may come out either medium, fine, <laughs> or coarse hair. So mix them together, then you come to you. So you come out with, just say a medium, um, thick, bushy type of hair. That because your mom and dad, you know, you know, mixing together it made you, and you came out with your own texture of your hair. And sometimes you can have three or four different textures on one hair, okay? You got to call the uh, towel lick, where hair goes one way, they're a different direction than the other ones. So this is number one. It can be from genetics. And genetics also mean that you are predisposed to either early hair loss, early graying, uh, your hair only grow to a certain length. So all this comes in to these here, falling, breaking, whatever. All these come into the DNA. So you have to realize when you, if your parents get together, uh, you don't know how far back it goes and what mixture of other races that were, were being added into your family pool, okay? So one reason could be genetics, genetics. Then the other one could be your you or my hormonal imbalance. That means your hormone imbalance, that means <laughs> your vitamins. Be vitamin deficient. You can have low vitamin A, B, or C, one of those. Um, you can have thyroids, thy, I don't know, whatever, thyroids. You know, you have thyroids. Then you can come down to having diabetes. That can also set your hair off, you know, because it, all these things right here contribute to the blood flow to your scalp. And to your scalp, it's to your hair follicles. So if the blood is not flowing really good to your hair follicles, then you have a problem. You know, you some you can like it's three. I say three, three ways you can tell. One is like me; I have a head full of hair, so my hormonal balance is is is, is balanced enough. It's balanced, and then when you start to see why people get start getting early, um, start losing their hairline, but they're not bald. They start losing, so that's that's uh, in the middle in the middle. So you got a full head of hair, 
Then you got your cousin that, you know, they start losing their hairline. That's one. The imbalance, the blood flow is not circulating all the way or correctly. So you got to figure out what to do. Then you got, they just bald patch. You get bald, you just get bald. Now that one is your H B T blockers. Now I never heard of that until a couple of years ago. What that means, blockers. Now it's like the testosterone, testosterone for the men down there. You know, for anybody, testosterone. I'm just gonna leave it at that. But anyway, H D T blockers that flows here to the head. So you can either get mine is flowing very well. There's no problem with it. I got a head full of hair. But then you, like I said, you get another one that the hairline started running sparsely all over. And because this is being blocked. This is blocking. Blocking your, 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 um, your cuticles. So the blood can flow and the hair can just, you know, go like it's supposed to go. And then the last one, when you thin it, then you just only get the alopecia. You know what I'm saying? A male baldness. That means it is clogged. So your cuticles on your, on, your, on your head is clogged. It's clogged. There's nothing going to grow out of here or whatever. But you can fix this. You can fix all this. You just have to go and get a, uh, a check at the doctor. And ask for a vitamin check, a vitamin de deficiency check, and check everything else. You know, when you go to the doctor, ask for a vitamin de deficiency um, check. And then when that check, when you have that done, it will tell you what vitamin you're missing. You know what I'm saying? And then with this, there's ways that you can unblock these to get your hair to grow. And you have to go and um, I'm learning a little bit about this, not as much, but I know, but I know this can be reversed. You can grow your hair back, but it all depends if you find the right um, regimen, the right pills, the right ingredients. Okay, we we do a lot of stuff, but always we see a little bit of action, but that's all we're gonna see a little bit of action. Sometimes people hair will grow. Say, oh girl, your hair ain't grown or whatever. In my, my own opinion is, your hair going to grow when it's going to grow. Ain't no damn miracle pill out there. Because we got to put all the vitamins back in. Because somewhere when we get our, um, when we get all this baldness, we're missing vitamins. <laughs> Something is clogged up. You know what I mean? So we got to unclog it and get those vitamins back into our, our own body to regulate like a smooth driving car. So that's number two. And number three, medication. Um, all medication <laughs> have side effects. Okay. Point blank, I ain't going to that deal. You should already know. Okay. High blood pressure, diabetes, um, thyroids, uh, any uh, any medication. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to go through them all. You know what you're taking. You can look at your hair before you took that medication. And then after you took the medication, you can see where your hair gets dry and brittle and stuff like that. There. So to deal with that, you have to find <laughs> something <laughs> that will help. That does not affect you. That does not cause any more side effect with the medication. Or you know what I mean? So if you got medication, all of them have side effects. So side effects, your hair can be dry, they, they, you know, your blood flow to your scalp is not all the way, then you might get alopecia or whatever. But then you might have to find a remedy that doesn't cause any more damage to your blood cells, <laughs> to your arteries, to your heart, to your kidney or liver. You gotta make sure, find the right, the right medication, the right mixture that you will see improvement all the way around from your nails, your eyes, your toes, your skin, your hair. So that means your body will get back on track, okay? So then next one is your environment. That's like where you live. You live. You know, work. You know, family. Um, quality of air. Of 
repair and war. Now, the environment is where you live. So, you live in the country, you live in the suburbs, or you live in the city. Okay, if you live in the country, you know, there's really not that much, um, you know, industrial going on. You know what I'm saying? So you're out there in the country <laughs> living the slow life. You get fresh air, fresh water, and food, you know, all this stuff is, you know, fresh. So then you come in the suburbs, you lose some of that freshness. You know what I'm saying? So we go from like from 100 down. So in the country, there's no industrial, there's nothing, just you can walk to the creek and get some water. You got a well in the backyard, you can drink the water, you can go out there and pick something out of the garden and eat and stuff. You can smell the fresh air. That's a good sign. Your hair gets whatever, gets sunlight and all that stuff. So you go to the suburb, okay, you drop from 100, say about 80 to 70, okay? And that depends on which suburbs you're living in, okay? And also, the suburbs, depending on how far they're away from the industrial area. Now, you can live in a suburb every like 20, 30 miles outside. Well, who wants to live that far? But some people do. That lives only in a residential area where there's no industrial that's like factories and stuff like that or a lot of highways and, and, and a lot of tractor trailers and stuff like that. that you know, where they, in an industrial area. Where they don't, if you don't live in those areas, so you'll get a good semi-quality, you know, uh, air and water, so, you know what I'm saying? So you can get, your hair is luscious. It gets everything you need because there's no, that much contamination in the water if you live in the country or a rural area or whatever. So you go to the server, same thing. You get, the quality of their air drops because you're getting closer to the city. So that means the water may not be as per as the one you're living in in the country or the urban um, rural area. So that'll also affect your hair too because you don't know what that neighborhood has been built on top of. You know what I'm saying? So uh, certain places they have methane gas leaks or whatever that comes seep up through the house. So once you um, have that problem, um, either you get a... Um, one of those detectives, I'm, you know, I'm going off over there, but I'm trying to cover everybody. So they know that I'm trying to get everybody because I don't live in the States, I live in Germany. But even in Germany, the same thing. Even in the United States, they have the country, rural area, suburbs, and the city. So I live in the city. So guess what? Now we're going to go to the city. So we're going to drop from, from 70, 50. Now we're going to drop down to maybe 40, 30. Now, the reason why I say that there, because I'm living in the city. So, there's more factories here. There's a lot more transportation. And I mean, transportation is there's a lot more buses. There's a lot more um, semi-tractor trailers. There's a lot more delivery trucks. There's a lot more cars, motorcycles, bakeries, um, manufacturing, you know, stuff like that there. They're all here. So, the quality of air changes. And that also puts effects on your hair. <laughs> so you go in there and spend five, six hours trying to cleanse your hair. I would say that there. You're trying to cleanse your hair from all the toxic that, that's been in there. You know, from the product and all the other stuff. And, you know, from outside, all the air. All that stuff is going back into your hair. Into your hair. And then you put, you put on, um, say you maybe put on lace front wigs and you're using glue or, uh, yeah, glue, yeah, glue, <laughs> glue. Um, you got a relaxer, same thing. But you, you're doing the same thing. You want a deep cleansing or clarifying shampoo, that's what I'm gonna say. So you go in there, you're in the inner city, and you can go and do a cleaning shampoo in the country. Your hair's gonna be, poof, lovely. Even in the suburbs, it's gonna be, okay. But here, you're gonna have more in um, rural area, sub in the inner city, inner city. So when you get to the inner city here, things changes. The water quality is not going to be as good as in the suburb, suburbs, or even the rural 
rural, uh, rural or the country, the countryside. So when you get in the city, we got a lot more to deal with. We got more, uh, like I said, cars here. People abandon their cars next to, to the rain gullies and stuff, and it just drains into the water. And the water system is not going to be very, it's not going to be that, that, that clean. Clean. It's not going to be really, really clean like these other two areas. So you got more pollution in the inner city. So when you're trying to clarify your hair, detoxify your hair, you got to use a whole bunch of stuff to do that. And if you don't do it um, to clarify your hair, to get all that stuff off, and then you turn around and you put a, a moisturizing shampoo on top of that, normally I recommend two moisturizing shampoo after you um, clarify that, do a, a clarifying shampoo. Um, two moisturizing shampoo, then you put them with a, with a uh, conditioner and a dryer, or leave it. that's up to you. But these be the reason why uh, your hair will change because of your environment. Then work. Work if your job is stressful. <laughs> or uh, you have to wear a cap on it all the time. You have to wear a hairnet. Uh, you're sweating your head because of your work and you know you sleep and all that stuff like that. So that are, that are, your work environment will leave for your head to be dry, brittle, falling out, and you'll get alopecia. Because, you know, all this stuff. Because if you have to have your hair closed up all the time, 24-7, your hair can't breathe. And normally, 9 out of 10 times, most ladies, they just leave their hair in an apartment, in an apartment, in a ponytail, or in braids until, I don't know, when they get tired, like three, four months or something like that. That's not good. You know, that would cause it. You're working right. Then home. You get home, you want to put your own relaxer on, or you just don't do nothing to it. Your family, they stressing. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to do nothing. So you got a lot of stuff going on in the family. We ain't even talking about doing hair. We talking about paying bills, um, your children, X, Y, Z. So the family also, I mean, in the environment, your, your family is your environment, your environment, family, the way you live, the way you work in your family, that can also make all this happen because you're, you're stressing yourself so much that you can almost cause yourself to have a heart attack or a stroke, and that also prevent airflow, blood flow, to your head, to your brain, and to your hair. So you gotta make sure you take care of that stuff right there, because that will get you. So we did the environment, and then we got allergies here. Does that mean you're allergic to stuff? Okay. You're allergic to, to scent, to, to smells, um, certain kind of penicillin, peanut butter, um, gluten, 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 gluten food, or you know, gluten, gluten, I don't know what it is, but gluten. Uh, you could be allergic to paper bags. I mean, anything, certain things that, that mean you have an allergy to. So, like, certain people can't take the relaxer. Okay? And they may try and get all these up here. Dry, brittle, hair falling out, and alopecia, too. You know what I'm saying? Because your hair's dry, the blood flow has stopped, and when it comes dry, it's going to be brittle because it's not holding moisture in the hair. The hair's not being moisturized. You know what I'm saying? The follicles are not functioning as they should be. You know? And the strand is going <laughs> trying to, trying to survive. And then the next thing you know, it's going to fall out. <laughs> the next thing you tell your ass me right here. Alopecia. So, you ought to go to the doctor to get an allergy <laughs> test. <laughs> and also, there's like, when you do like a semi-permanent color, um, or yeah, a semi-permanent color or a rinse or a tint. Now they have something in there uh, to make it dark or whatever. They use this coal, like black coal. And a lot of people is, is allergic to coal. It's a coal. C-O-A-L, coal. That shit that you burn, yeah, coal. So people are allergic to that. Certain people are allergic to certain ingredients that's, that are in any type of... Um, that's a fragrance, any type of shampoo, perfume, lotion, body oil. So some people may not know they're allergic until they actually put it on. And some people can die from not knowing that they're allergic to a certain uh, ingredient in a product. So um, I have heard stories where people have put a semi-permanent color on their hair and they had the charcoal in it. And the person didn't know that they was allergic to charcoal. 
they soon found out either that that instant or later on that day because their head had swollen up so bad they had to go to the hospital. Thank God they never hear from me. So you have to check or you have to get an allergy check of are you allergic to anything? You know what I'm saying? Anything that can will cause all this. Dry this bird or fall on that in alopecia. Okay? So I can do that. Then number seven. Never said self afflictive. You know what I mean? That means you go home and try to color your hair, relax your hair, uh, do your own sew ins, do your own lace fronts, do your own, um, just try to do your own hair. <laughs> and you don't want to follow the, the, the right rules that have been set in that package of a relaxer. Those instructions are in the box of the relaxer. So number seven is self-afflicted. Self-afflicted. So when you go down to self-afflicted, that means whatever you're coming in, when you're looking all crazy and stuff, oh, you don't want to tell nobody who did it. Nine out of ten times, we know you did it yourself. But my hair won't find out. Oh, I, I, I use this bleach and whatever. But then if you use bleach, according to me, I don't know about nobody else, but when I use bleach on anybody's hair, I use neutralizing shampoo. So I don't know who the Whoever told you just rinse your hair with normal shampoo, I don't know what the hell they're talking about. I don't know. And even with a relaxer, same thing. You know, say and sorry. They got color for semi-permanent colors. You're going to shampoo it out. Me, then say side. I do my combination. Hey, try to make sure your hair, after you, after you come to me, from self afflicting yourself, because how you got dry, brittle, and your hair is falling out and you get alopecia. And where sometimes you ain't did so much damage, you're going to have to start all over. So this is do-it-yourself here. Yeah. D-I-Y. D-I-Y. You did it your damn self. So now... I'm, 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 yeah, I'm saying some colorful words and stuff. We're grown folks, okay? So these are what really <laughs> are happening to you. So you can take what I tell you for a joke or not. But hey, I got hair. And I bleach my hair. But I make sure I neutralize my hair. <laughs> I neutralize my hair. I neutralize my hair. I neutralize my hair. Shampoo it. Moisturize the conditioner. Moisturize the shampoo, I'm sorry. And then I put my conditioner on it and let it go. So, yeah, men can take a lot more chemical um, on their hair because our, our hormonal, you know, our hormone, our bodies are made different to take, you know, a lot more on our hair. Yeah, I'm just saying our hair. We can't take that much more yet because you, you hear, you know, they be crying. But anyway, back to the test of hand. Eight reason why your hair is dry, brittle, falling out, and you are balding as a woman, alopecia. Okay? This is Tony International. So I'm still not telling you. So this year I've tried to go on what you should know, why you're experiencing all of the stuff that you're experiencing, and also putting the years that I know to work, and not just to look cute and handsome. But anyway, well, eight... <laughs> That's the, that's, that's the last one. And number eight is other people's hands. Your mama hand, your aunt hand, your girlfriend hand, your boyfriend hand, the neighbor down the street hands, that girl live around the block two ways over with the dirty house over there, hands, that other stylist that everybody go to, but she never let them see their hair while she doing it. Then about like two or three years later, she looked like she just been scalped all around. You can, you know, and other people's hands. <laughs> other people's hands, you got. How many people you got? Two. Two types of people. When they come down and doing your damn hair. They come down and doing your hair. Two types of people. Two types of people. The ones that are gonna do your hair right, and the ones that are gonna do it wrong. Now you got professional, they get paid. And you got your friend that's gonna do it. 
And then you got professionals that get paid. And you got your friend, your girlfriend, whoever the hell gonna do it wrong. So you got some girl down the street that may do it right. That means she give a damn about what she do. Okay? So, but, number eight is other people's hands. So, if you don't want these here, dry, brittle, your hair falling out, and, 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 and at the end of the day, they're going to call it alopecia, but your shit didn't fell out because uh, you don't let this person do your hair without you being, uh, without you just giving a, giving a dirt about your own head. You know what I'm saying? So, if you don't ask them about shampoos, conditioners, trims, uh, clarifying shampoo, what should I use on my scalp? You can trust somebody to do your hair, yeah. But you also need to trust them that they would give you the right information that you need to that that you need to know to make sure that your hair is not gonna be there. You know, because some people are like, oh Todd, you got growing hands. Okay, I don't see them no. You know. Um, uh, well, Todd, you make my hair fall out. Okay. Um, why you didn't call me? Oh, I just thought I'd let it grow. So guess what? It might be my fault. If I'm my fault, I am Please come back. I will honor what I have done or did or have done, whichever one we want, how you want to say it. But um, when I do my now, when I when I do these Todd International um, videos, I, I, I'm, I'm coming at you at a, a, at a, a professional um, at a professional term and also and a joking term too, because that's how I work. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna tell you the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not gonna lie to you, because people believe a lot before they believe the truth. So I'm gonna give you the truth. Then you can take the lie somewhere else, okay? But these are the eight things that you should know. Genetics, hormonal imbalance, medication, environment, allergies, okay? Self-afflicted, I don't think I spelled that right, but it's self, self-effort, self-afflicted, whatever it is. And then you got other people's hands. These are the eight what have you bald head. So it's like three or four types of alopecia. So I just got to figure out which one you is. You got to see a dermatologist for that, which I am not a dermatologist. But I want to leave you with this. If you go to a stylist or somebody doing your hair, it doesn't even matter. And you need to take a look at your hair when it has been taken down from a style. In a mirror that has light, and you look at your hair from the front, the side, the side, the back, the other side, the, the side up here. Oh, y'all yeah, can't see my side. In here. And back in front. Now, if you, you can probably get that out. I'll leave it there. Okay. If you look in there after you go to the stylist and everything, and you notice that your hairline has moved back, then that's a sign that these people don't know what the hell they're doing, and you need to end your um, visit with these people. Okay? You need to end, it, end your visit with these people. Now, when you came there, you had a head full of hair. All your, 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 your sides, your back, and all that was there. Now, over a month or two, maybe if you get past a year, you'll be a dumb, you're, you're, you're done. You're done. She gets you get past six months. Okay, you can save a little bit. But if you get past a little bit long, we're going to take a little bit more time to grow these follicles back. And, and you know, this is, this, is self, this is in other people's hands. This is other people's hands. So when you put yourself in other people's hands, you got to make sure you're looking at your hair. You're paying attention to your hair. But every time between six months to, to a year, and some of may keep you away from the mirror, but when you realize and you know that it's not how you came in and how you're leaving and what you have um, um, your service have been, you know, been offered to you, given to you and stuff, and you know the difference between your hair thinning or getting thicker. There's going to be one of the two. So if it's thinning, you need to cut it, stop it, 
find another hair salon that's going to treat your hair and that's going to tell you what you need. Not slap some relaxer on here, not put another quick weave on you, not do all this, excuse me, um, all this other stuff that they need to, you know, try to mask the problem that you have or they created. Either or, when you feel something is wrong, then next your next appointment with this person, let, let you want to see your own hair and say you want to wear your own hair. Okay? You want to wear your own hair, and that's it. And just walk out of the door. Because when you figure out something is wrong, she or he already know going, you're going, he or she gonna already figure it out that you figured it out, that they don't know what the hell they're doing. They just there to get the money. So it's better sooner than later. So if you're going in and you feel like, well, this ain't the right hairdresser, don't not stop coming to them. I ain't gonna say keep going to them either. But I said, if you're gonna go there to know that it's gonna be the end that you go to, let them go in there and take out their hair. Let them go and do your hair one more time. And then you sit there, sit there, and you tell them, well, my hair is this and whatever. And then you don't have to explain nothing to them. You're like, I didn't come in like this. But I'm leaving out like this with my money. Don't get all upset, whatever, blah, blah. Girl, you, you only pay for the time that you sit in her chair, just like you pay for light bill every month. Okay? You pay for January. February is coming around. So you got to pay for February. So just don't sit up there and argue with them. Tell them, hey, this is not what I paid for. Okay, I'm done. You ain't got to worry about me no more. And go and find somebody else that's going to do your hair correctly. You know, don't sit there and argue with nobody. I gotta tell them, I'm replaceable. <laughs> I'm replaceable, boo boo. So are you. So, this is Todd from Todd International Hair Salon. This is why the eight reasons why your hair is dry and brittle and falling out and you're falling as a woman, alopecia. Hallelujah. So, these are the eight ones genetics, hormone imbalance, medication, environment, allergies, self afflicted, and other people's hands. Done the eight. Done the eight. So, we're signing off.